been done last time and what's changed since the last time well basically not much uh, last time what we did actually we prepared everything up to finishing step on page 63 all 13 actually sorry 11 steps and um, in the meantime what I did is I primed all my parts for the vertical step so basically as I said to you in earlier videos I'm gonna be using those rattle cans with the uh, self itching primer to prime. Uh, to be honest, I'm not happy with that at all. Like, uh, well, that's same like you use those cans to paint something, same for primer. Uh, it's not a nice way of spraying to the, uh, to the parts, to the details you have. Uh, first of all, like I did all parts and also I did inner part of the vertical step. It took me two full cans, which I found well quite a lot. Look, here it says 340 grams. I'm not sure how many milliliters here. I guess it's not the 340 milliliters. I guess it's le way less because 340 grams and this primer probably weights like doubled to a uh, water weight. So I guess maybe, maybe about, I don't know, again, maybe 200 milliliters, maybe 220 milliliters of primer each, so it all gone. I have still quite a little bit here. Uh, well, the quality is probably nice, but it was a little bit hard and tricky to spray. I had to do that near the door. It smells. It smells, oh, it's the hell. So you have to have a good protection, which I actually did. Like I used the 3M mask. I had my uh, glasses on me, so I was well protected, but still the, um, like you need to have a very very well ventilated uh, room or area where you're planning to paint it or do uh, where, where you're planning to prime it or do it outside which is another solution for my next priming i bought this uh, the spray gun today and uh, i bought a filter for it everything and uh, i'm probably going to be getting the same type of primer just by gallon which is less expensive and probably it's gonna work better for me. I, I, I probably have to start to work with this uh, spraying gun and I'm sure it's gonna be way better for me. So, that's my story. That's all what has changed. So I primed my parts. I still have to do some extra additional parts, like little, few little more plates, which I'm gonna take care of now. And the next step will be actually the riveting. So we are coming to real riveting of the things. So I will work on a few little parts and I will start my riveting. So, well, let's take a look. to always watch what the size of the what, what size of the die is dice is installed in your uh, dimpling machine or whatever uh, important because for example instruction says dimple four holes they don't explain what size to use just dimple those four holes you have to figure it out you have to check okay what's my size of the hole okay my size of the hole is 30 now what should be the dimple die size 30 measure okay fit into the hole and uh, stays there firmly that's a very important moment so just watch and always check uh, what size of the rivet will be in that hole and basically what's going to be your um, die size for that hole well i'm not sure if it's only me or uh, I bought the dimple dies and they have no markings on those. I mean, no, it's understandable they are different size and you can always measure and compare using the rivet, but, well, just a simple solution. 
take a sharpie and just write 40, 30, whatever size it is. I mean, it's, I don't know why they're so lazy just to put some sticker on them. <laughs> because technically for you, like it's easier to pick if you right away see the size top and bottom part. So let's say 30, 30 is your 40, 40. Well, just quick hint. Actually, it's a new day already, so I'm starting to work on a new day now. And uh, the funny thing happened this uh, day with me. <laughs> so um, the next step uh, on page 6-4 and the step number 6 is basically a riveting of the two rudder stops to the top bracket. Well, and uh, in order to rivet what we need, we actually need the parts, we need the rivets, I've even more of those. But most important thing, we need a tool to rivet, right? So I have my beautiful and amazing rivet squeezer, like pneumatic squeezer, which can do everything for me perfectly. But imagine, I don't have a dice. <laughs> I can't believe that. I mean, I can't believe I got everything. I got all tools inspected when after purchasing. How I miss those, I have no idea. Probably lack of experience, right? Lack of uh, professional experience. So I probably miss, mismatched or I thought probably those dice are proper ones, but those actually for dimpling, not for riveting. So obviously right now I have no dice for my pneumatic squeezer and it looks like my first rivets will go, well, using rivet gun which is also quite fun, but I was expecting as the like fancy tool to use it, you know. Well, so anyway, I already placed my order uh, just now with air sp aircraft spruce and uh, hope to get it in a couple of days, like in two, three days. But well, still, it's just sad that you see bad preparation. Anyway, let's see how it's going to look like. I will try to put uh, my first rivets using the rivet gun and uh, let's see what, how it's going to look like. First riveting experience. Actually, not really great, but at least I, I think I understood that and I figured it out. So as I just showed you before, and um, you saw that uh, the first rivet which I made didn't go through well. So that was a mistake. I uh, actually what I did is I I put a backing bar, I touched it right to the material. I put a rivet from this side, so it was basically popping up from this side and I tried to rivet it, which is wrong, of course, obviously, it's just riveted on top instead of going down. So that was my mistake. The second rivet, uh, my rivet gun was adjusted to too much power. So basically rivet, well, it's riveted, but it's like, I don't know, like it's probably, it hit it too much, thus I get like this rivet, like too flat here. I don't know how critical is that I'll read, if I need to redo it or not, probably it's okay. Maybe not, so I have to check it. The third rivet was better, the fourth was even better, and last uh, three rivets, as you can see when the head's here, like this is my uh, very first one, this is my second one, so 
like heads basically smashed. Third one is better and three rivets which I just did here, well, they are way better, looks much better. So, it looks like I figured that out. I had to make my uh, pressure here closer to minimum, so it, it, it now works better, my rivet gun. Head is properly set here. Backing bar, of course this backing bar is not for the flat work on the surface of the table. Of course I need another backing bar which is probably just a flat piece of metal, of steel, right? Where I can put it on top and just work. But in this case, while well, I'm using this backing bar, it's probably acceptable. It's still a piece of metal, right? But with the same time, um, it's probably not the right tool to use, so I will order the correct one. Aside of that, I'm done with riveting of the first part. And, um, well, we will see again, I have to read if, if I'm okay with letting the rivet to stay here like that, too flat. I don't know, I have to read, I have to think, maybe if it's not good I will just drill it out. Because the first rivet, I, which didn't go through well, I just drilled it with the same diameter of the, um, of the drill bit and just removed that. Let's see what's in the next step. say that probably the uh, pneumatic squeezer well, probably would make it much easier for me uh, it's the first time I was riveting in my life right so another important part which I'm missing is the uh, riveter checker like the uh, uh, the backside riveter check tool uh, I'm using the caliper to do that so I know like it has to be 1.5 of the size of the diameter of the rivet on the um, outside, the maximum di minimum diameter and minimum minimum height should be the half of the diameter of the rivet. So I'm checking it with a caliper. So far, looks good. Well, not all rivets, of course. Some probably are good. Some are not that good. But within the specs, yeah. So the first part is ready, and now it's turn to do the second part. Uh, lots of riveting is required for the skeleton assembly, of course. I will check if I can do actually skeleton assembly, if I want to do the skeleton assembly using the conventional uh, rivet gun or I still want to wait for uh, spruce to ship me my, uh, uh, my uh, dies for the um, pneumatic squeezer and just do it with the, in, a, in a different way, I'll see, but they actually shipped it already. So well, let's see and uh, you will see that as well as me. Mistakes happens and I did one. So what's happened actually? Thus, uh, this part, we have uh, like uh, hinges, right? So top and bottom and uh, middle hinges. So the bottom, the smallest hinge, which is VS1012 part number, there are two hinges, which should be riveted to the bottom, right? But between them, there are two holes. There were two holes, which I riveted already, but those two holes are actually unreachable if you rivet in both hinges first as shown on the, uh, in, the, in the instruction manual. So be careful, I had to drill out my rivets and remove this hinge and after that just to cover those two holes uh, with the rivets. So be careful and um, before you rivet something just uh, check if something else needs to be riveted next to it and will you be able to reach with the uh, bucking bar or not. 
I mean, technically, it was probably possible to rivet it. Would I have a backing bar of like quarter inch? But my thinnest backing bar is this one, so it doesn't fit, and I have no other option but just to drill out and uh, re rivet everything again, like on those two. Not a big deal, but just mistakes happen. First of all, I decided to wait for my uh, dice, like inverts for my uh, pneumatic squeezer. Main reason for that, before I will start assembly of the skeleton, I would like to have that set up. Because assembly of the skeleton will be way much easier by using the pneumatic squeezer. Just by how parts are attached and uh, backing bar used there, I don't think it's a good solution. I don't have a manual squeezer, I have only a pneumatic, ma pneumatic one without the dice for it, for the uh, rivets, so I have to wait. Aircraft Spruce, they shipped it already to me, so I hope to get it by, by weekend. Probably it's gonna be late Saturday, or morning Saturday delivery. And I hope to continue my work on Sunday or Saturday for the next video. Now, mistakes. Well, uh, read read instructions and after that try to understand instructions it's very important what i found is basically well they treat you as a person who understands what what he's doing like really understands and um, even in some places i was disagree like why they use a longer rivet while they could use a little bit shorter rivet it's only two parts which are attached together anyway i'm following instructions i did one mistake where i had to uh, drill out the uh, rivets and remove that hinge, but it's fine. Uh, I found two or three three rivets I found which were like not not nice not nicely placed, you know. So I drilled them out and I re um, re, -rivet, uh, re, -re riveted those. Don't be scared to make a mistake. Don't be scared to make a bad rivet. You just drill it out nicely. Use a drill bit exactly in the center from the top. Slowly, slowly, zig, 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 and remove the old rivet. Be careful, do not damage the whole uh, debris again. Just to remove any any scratchy or uh, like uh, sharp angles, and put a new rivet. That's it. That's all. So, uh, so far so good. My progress is okay. Uh, it's too early to estimate anything now, but uh, so far so good. I will give some hours information after I finish assembly of the um, basically the vertical stabilizer part, not the, the not the rudder part, but vertical stabilizer part uh, complete. Probably at that time I will come to the um, like to some point where I will be able to calculate my hours to compare probably to some other builders just to see if I'm too slow or too fast. Well, I guess too slow. <laughs> Uh, in terms of hours, not the time it's spent, because different builders work differently. Someone works many hours a week, someone can only work a couple hours per few weeks, but hours totally. And uh, well, that's it, that's all. I'm waiting for my dice for the uh, manual squeezer. In the meantime, hopefully it won't take long and uh, by weekend I will have it here and I'll continue my work on the skeleton and after that on the skin and you will see everything. For now, have a good one and uh, take care.